Don't you just absolutely love it with worlds collide and you get something just fun in the end? And these worlds for me, well, they are of course your B-class low-budget horrors. Not gonna lie, the more I've done this, the more I've just fucking loved them. And that other world we're talking about is Scooby-Doo, of course. We got some work to do now. I don't know how much of the theme song I could get away with there without copyright, but I hope you enjoyed that little sample. This one actually came in kind of by chance, like a bit of an accident here, but still nonetheless, full credit to you NATO. Knowing nothing more than just, is that a Scooby-Doo horror? I had to dive deeper, and this is where we stumble across Saturday Morning Mystery, or Saturday Morning Massacre, it does go by two names. And first off, I love the name. I remember being a young kid running down the stairs for Scooby-Doo, ready for a Saturday Morning Mystery. Now I'm an adult, I am very much into a Saturday morning massacre. <laughs> it's, it's great, it came full circle. Now, of course, it's not literally Scooby-Doo, there's going to be some changes, but just looking at the photo here, it looks like they've done as much as they can to be Scooby-Doo, but legally, not Scooby-Doo. And I absolutely commend them for that effort and just towing that line for our own amusement. Now, is it going to be as campy and cheesy as Scooby-Doo? It says, danger, leave haunted aisle. Or is it going to lean into full-fledged horror? So without further ado, you guys know what to do by now. Grab yourself a drink, kick your feet up, do hit subscribe if you haven't already, that would be amazing. And let's see what Saturday Morning Mystery slash Massacre has to offer. We are not messing around in this movie. We get that real sort of true story message right from the get-go. Which after the movie, I have looked up and I can't see this being a true story. If I'm wrong, please let me know. That would make my day. Nothing would make me happier than knowing that there is a real life Scooby-Doo gang out there. It's 1994. It's also a Thursday for some reason. That's relevant. It's not relevant, but you know, it's Thursday. And we jump straight into a search with the legally not Scooby-Doo gang. Was an escaped convict. Yes, that is a screaming child and a convict they are looking for. Already, I think we can tell this is not the gang that we grew up with. Ruh -roh. They are just hunting these dark, ominous halls, and yet yeah, it's starting to get a bit fucked in here. Uh, 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 Holy shit. This can't be a true story. This is not a true story. It's a projection. Oh, that makes sense. Not even gonna lie, I have forgotten all of the Scooby-Doo villain tricks that they employed, other than eyes behind the picture. Like, that's always a classic. I was smiling cheek to cheek at this point. Like, I'm already feeling nostalgic beyond belief. We keep on hunting, and is it actually gonna be ghosts? Maybe not. Is it gonna be some disused carnival owner getting revenge? Who knows? <laughs> What the shit? Oh, no, it's a nonce ring. It's a <laughs> fucking hell movie. Like, this is so far removed from Scooby-Doo. I fucking love it. Not, not what's happening in this room, just to clarify. I love where it's going. We're diving into the opening credits now that this mystery's been solved. This movie's Velma has just given a bit of backstory. When we first got together, we hunted ghosts. Sometimes aliens, moss monsters, the occasional scary robot. She goes on for a little bit here, and really, not much of it's relevant. Like, it's all really cool stuff, but you don't need to know it. Hamlet's his dog, part Great Dane, part something else, and all affection. Just as a quick side note, have any of you ever played Psychonauts? These opening credits look just like the figments from Psychonauts, and I love it. Loved it there. Love it here. It's great. More movies should employ it. Anyway, that aside, her background is pretty much what you know already with the Scooby-Doo gang, just with some slight variation. Instead of Fred, we have Chad. Instead of Daphne, it's Gwen. Velma is Nancy. Shaggy is now Floyd. And our main boy, Scoobs? Yeah, he's Hamlet. I don't know who picked the names. Some you can get, right? Like, Fred to Chad, kind of one syllable, kind of similar-ish names. Scooby to Hamlet, that's... <laughs> That's going to need some explaining, which the movie does not provide. This movie, though, does just clarify that, yes, Chad and Gwen, they were pumping. We all kind of knew that from the cartoon, right? Only here, Nancy and Floyd, yeah, they, they used to date. Velma, we all knew you were the naughty one. There is something, though, about just Velma calling out people as assholes that gets me so hyped for this movie. We get to the bottom of things. Just ask these assholes. 
have visitors today. It's so good. I love it. The cops here are locking up the bad guys and our assumptions were correct. You busted up a kitty porn ring. Which only begs the question, why did they use the ghost projectors? Like, is that almost a defensive measure so people don't look into them? These guys had a cover story of a dead convict haunting the totally. place. You know, like if they get too afraid of the ghost, they're not going to look further into them. It's a weird defense. That aside, the cops here are just going off on our newfound Scooby gang. Shut the fuck up! We've had this staked out for months. They have been building a case for quite a while against this ring, and yet the Scooby gang are here. They've kind of saved the day, but probably could have went for more charges. What do you think this is, some Saturday morning cartoon show? Quick question though for you is, what game is this sound from? Real detectives. Like, can you hear it in the background? Detectives. When watching this movie, it stood out to me like a sore thumb, and I can't place it. It drove me wild. If you know what that's from, Please do let me know, because fuck me. I know this has nothing to do with the movie right now, but I need help. Anyway, back to the movie. Cops are mad. Scooby gang don't feel like they've done any wrong. But Chief, what have they done exactly? Didn't do shit but taint evidence and fuck our investigation. Got it. Thanks for clarifying. They keep arguing back and forth, and to be honest, the cops, they are not letting up on the Scooby gang. Well, the Hamlet gang, I suppose. It doesn't really roll off the tongue the same, does it? The Hamlet gang. Hamlet do? It doesn't work. Now onwards to the aftermath, and it's pretty clear that this gang are just not getting the work that they need. So I can call my parents again and get a loan for us at 15%, but we haven't paid off the last one yet. Nancy, though, is making some valid points. Save a kid from pedophiles and you don't even get paid for it. How, how would you make that sustainable? It is still so weird seeing them taking on, like, real-world evils. Like, <laughs> it's great. Let's figure it out. I can call my parents anytime. No. Gwen is still just a little nasty that we all thought she was and let's be honest, hope she was from the Scooby-Doo days. I don't, I don't have my period in it. Oh, really? Velma and I look in the basement. Daphne? I mean, Scooby, you and Velma check upstairs and Fred and I look in the basement. Right! Nancy, though, gets a call, dips on lunch and it turns out there's a new client wanting their services. Okay, okay, so tomorrow we'll see you... Tomorrow. 6.30, meet me at the house? You can absolutely. So he's hiring the old Hamley gang. Hamley gang, does it work? Does it work? It's not Scooby gang, it's the Hamley gang. I'm gonna roll with it. So he's hiring the Hamley gang because it turns out people are scared there's ghosts in this manor and they're no longer working on it and keeping it up to scratch. I'm not gonna work here no more, man. I do only hope that this gardener here is not stereotyped in any way. What are you worried about, Pedro? They're coming this weekend. Of course, of course it's Pedro. <laughs> of course it's fucking Pedro. Did you expect anything else? Hey, Pedro, come on, man. Why are you running? Why are you running? No more Chupacabra, no more Spirito, no more Diablo! Things get a little bit spooky and this businessman is taking matters into his own hands. Alright, you're gonna be that way. He doesn't have time to wait for the Hamley gang. The Hamley crew, the, ha the mystery gang. The bunch of people in this movie. He just keeps wandering around, starting on ghosts like he's ready for a square go, until we get that classic death shot. Let's go! It's fucking, I love it. Like, I love how bad it is. I just, it, when it pops up, it always surprises me. It's so shit and I love it. You should have followed old Pedro boy. He knows what he's doing. Oh, baby. The gang are on the road and we have got that mystery machine. Legally, not the mystery machine. We have a mysterious machine. Gonna go with that. It's vacant for a little while till the bank hired some maintenance crews and construction guys, but they keep getting scared away because of all the weird stuff that's going on. So far, I am loving these characters. Like, we know who they're supposed to be. The movie isn't making you think they're those people, if that makes sense, but we know who they are. It's this, it's Scooby, it's fuck it. I love it. It's, it's ticking all the boxes for me right now. What's wrong, Chad? Are you scared? No, I'm just, I'm having a little trouble with the accelerator. Floyd, though, is just like you would imagine Shaggy to be in the real world. Oh, I changed the oil and put uh, antifreeze in it. I didn't ask you to change the antifreeze because it's an air-cooled engine. I... <laughs> he's, he's such an idiot. Like, sure, Floyd, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Fucking antifreeze. It's what, it smells weird. It's Shaggy, what are you doing? Yeah, well, we gotta pull over. There's something wrong with the car. Something... Of course we break down, though. This mysterious machine is... Yeah, not working too well. I wonder why. Just in time too, because the sheriff rolls on up to them. Don't drive your van, man. This is any car. I have no idea why, but this cut here just fucking got me. Be happy to take a look. A 
Officer, do you know how far it is to the Kaiser place? Yeah, actually, there's a pretty good Mexican place just up the road. Um, they have really good enchiladas. What an absolutely laid-back sheriff he is. The girls just keep chatting to him while Chad is walking Hamlet in the background and Floyd, yeah, well, Floyd's hiding his drugs. The nighttime. It's part of what our delivery Oh, is. yeah, I guess they did mention something about that, yeah. You remember Shaggy. He was always in the back of the mystery machine just hiding his illegal drugs. Did you ever have any doubt, though, that Shaggy was clearly on something, though? Like, let's be honest, he was... He was not sober. Try this scoop. It looks medicinal. Yeah, we can take care of ourselves. Holy shit, acid too. Okay, that's a new one. Didn't expect the acid, but fair play, boy. Yeah, I really don't think they've told you all enough about the place. The sheriff here escorts them all the way up to the manor, just like any good Samaritan would. I don't believe he had any ulterior motives. You know, nothing that inclined him to be the good guy. Here is our boy, Hamlet. It makes me just so happy that a dog is a main character in this movie. Like, it's... <laughs> it, it, I can't explain to you how happy that makes me. I fucking hope he sees it to the end credits, because we know we're not in cartoon world anymore, so this is going to be a bit more grim. Fucking... Please, Hamlet. Like, make it to the end. The gang here just start scoping the place out and wander inside. They walk pretty slowly here, I'll be honest. It's just a bit of wandering about in their own time. I could show you around a little bit if you yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, that would actually be great. Eventually, after all this slow walking, we come into our first bit of spooky. A big bundle of sticks. A pile of sticks on the floor. That's a pentagram. Oh, sorry, Chad. The sheriff is just giving us a breakdown on the history of this manor, and it isn't anything that you've not really heard before. They have this big conversion and they have some vision that this is holy ground or something. He goes into like all avenues, by the way. Like this lasts a while and he keeps detouring on his own story. It was, uh, it was Christian. Did have a little bit of Eastern religion mixed in there. I'm going to cut a lot of it out, trust me. Really what I take away from this is the owners way back in the day were apparently Satanists and seen as crazy and their children got like taken off them. It was a bit of a shit show, to put it lightly. Everyone's just doing their own thing, just mingling about. You know that way where the sheriff's clearly talking to the bunch and they all just kind of fuck off and leave them for a while. It's not gonna lie, if it feels a little rude. From the bottom of my heart, man to man, fuck your story. Chad checks out the chimney and it's, uh, it's a little bit sus. Who is that? Well, you know, some of the people from town got weirded out, I guess, by the whole Eastern world. He chugs down his new discovery with their one shared, like, gallon of water, and we just move on. That looks far too awkward to drink out of. Like, nobody brought their own bottles. More creepy backstory, and then we head on out, but not before Nancy gets her own little spook herself. Over here. Huh? We keep on going. I fucking told you. <laughs> he goes on a bit. And the sheriff is even boring himself now. Naturally, everyone starts saying that their parents sacrificed their kids to the devil and burned them up in the incinerator. Like, this guy just stumbled across them on the road. Let's not forget that. He escorted them up like a good guy, and now he's just telling them the entire history of the movie in this building. Nobody's here, and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kaiser turn up in a motel room two miles away, dead. Does he have nothing else to do? Are crime rates just surprisingly low in this neck of the woods? Who knows? Floyd, though, proves that he is just a lovable idiot, just like Shaggy was back in the day. We're going on and this manor is getting darker and darker. Kid fell out this window and broke his neck. You gotta put a camera in this room. Found a leg over here. With this being an adult version, I do enjoy the fact that Floyd just says what he thinks. They died. Multiple stab wounds to each other. In the kitchen is where we found them. Well, this place is fucked up. Like, imagine this is Shaggy. It looks like we're stuck on Haunted Isle. Well, this place is fucked up. Chad spies a skull and he, like, connects to this thing. Detail, detail. 
it, it gets pretty intense, not gonna lie. That's it. This place is evil. Guys are sort of Satanists. So they built their school on hallowed ground. What the fuck is going on here? Like, it does just keep getting weirder and weirder for a little while. Fear. Fear. Oh shit, okay, so we are getting some supernaturally stuff going on now. Jinkies! Fair play movie. And um, so far, this has been paced fucking well. Like, I'm going to commend it where possible. I'm commending this movie. So after all this, the gang decide they are going to stay the night. You know, just keep an eye on the place, see what happens as we tick over from day to dawn. And the sheriff, well, he's got his eyes on a certain prize. It does have my car phone number as well as my office phone. So if you need anything at all, feel free to call either of those numbers. All right, I will. I'm sure he'll- Fucking knew this guy had an ulterior motive. Like, fucking, why else would he do all this? I'll see you later. All right, I'll see you later. Okay, bye. He knows what he wants and I respect it. Who's your mommy? Nancy somehow is clearly into that monotone, dull voice. Okay, bye. It's game time now and Chad is here to get to work. Can we just acknowledge that there's really something in this house that's real? I love that he actually believes in the supernatural. Like that's the kind of angle they're going for here that he is just the driving force behind their Argos and the rest of the team are there to sort of disprove them. We're gonna capture something yes. that's gonna happen yeah, yeah, tonight. Yeah, listen, okay? absolutely agree. do that. Hey. Floyd, did you go find turn the electricity? Not to be a dick to him, but just more to put the client's minds at ease that it's, you know, leaky pipes or just loud creaks and things like that. It's quite interesting. I like that. Her boy Floyd just takes Hamlet and off they wander. Like, they, they are a clear duo in this movie. They stumble across a little bit of weirdness. Like, they find the manor's incinerator because it's fucking normal for buildings to all have incinerators. Check it out, Hambone. And also, this bathroom though, that really gets him. Chad? The doors close here and Floyd and our good boy Hammy are just locked in. Fucking please see the end of the movie. Please. I hate that poor doggo. Like, I, I know it's a movie and it's obviously he's fine. It makes me sad when I hear a dog be sad in a movie. Like, I hope they know what acting is. <laughs> Don't you ever wish, though, that when you watch Scooby-Doo that Shaggy, he would just spark up once in a while? Well, don't you worry, this movie's got you covered. I can promise you this, Hambone. Well, there you go. There's Floyd sparking up his own doobie-doo. I love it. I'm going to get I love it. I'm so sorry. I love it. We cut on over to the gang and they're now just all together again. So, thankfully, everything seemed to be okay in that basement. And they're setting up their ghost-detecting... Thingies. Well, did you put lights on my microphone? Yes, I did. I thought they matched your sweater vest, Chadwick. Nancy keeps wandering around in the dark, and I can't help but feel that might not be the best idea for her. Like, just a little bit creepy manner. Thought to have ghosts in it. Maybe go with somebody. <laughs> Fucking hell, Floyd. That is not how to win her back. I mean, she's got the hots for the sheriff too. You need to up your game, Floyd. Okay, bye. These two have a moment and now I'm just confused. Like, we're told they're exes from each other. And then there's this little moment. Come on, we got more lights to set up. <laughs> Are they together? I don't know. It is weird to think though of the Scooby-Doo gang just pumping. It's a kid's cartoon. Yeah, clearly. A lot of sexual tension between them. I'm a man of substance. Dorky chicks like you turn me on too. Quick shot of our boy Hamlet here, because I'll never skip a good doggo. And we cut on over to Fred just sitting with his newly brightened microphone. He is just desperate to find something though. Like he is he is eager to find these ghosts. Is that you, Mona? Mona Kaiser? Now it's time for a musical montage all around these halls. This music just slaps, I'm not gonna lie, I am loving it. I'm really into this sort of 8-bit synth sounding vibe.
I do hope I get to show you that song, so hopefully there's a little bit of audio in there for you. If not, trust me, it's great. Great music aside though, did you fucking see that? I actually thought that was a cameraman the first time, so I went back and watched it and nope, that isn't a cameraman, it's just a weird thing. It looks like an insidious movie type thing. We keep on going and there are just spooks all around now. If you dare touch Hamlet, me, and chances are you guys watching, we're, we're coming for you. You're goddamn right. This montage though comes to a swift end with Chad still down by the old Chimaru. Would you like to sing for me? My name is Chad. <laughs> something is here, like confirmed, locked in. There's fucking something going on. Hats off to the movie for confirming it early on though. Like normally we just get spooks and noises and weird things for like an hour. They're getting this in early for us. Well done. The gang though are now in two minds. You've got Chad the Believer now wanting to dip on everybody and then you've got Nancy who is skeptical wanting to stay to like finally get the proof and just at least confirm what is going on. What if there is and what if we find it and record it and can verify it. Floyd, what if we can do that? And that would be worth so no, much it's more. Not about money. No, this is no, not about okay, money right it's now. It's not about money. I like it. It's a good mix. It's a good kind of argument to see here. And you know what? I am team Nancy on that for obviously her reasoning and nothing else. <laughs> Nancy's great. Nancy, Nancy is the goat. What is the one thing you told me you've wanted ever since you were a kid, huh? The one thing. Oh, antifreeze. He went to antifreeze for his vagina. Fucking Floyd, man. Just give it a rest with the antifreeze, will you? Like, it's done. It's dealt with. The van is outside. Stop going on about antifreeze. Also, does he say vagina? He went to antifreeze for his vagina. The vagina! Nancy here, though, eventually talks them all round into staying a night and either proving what's going on or prove that ghosts are real. You wanted to see a ghost. And now it's a possibility. Are you seriously telling me that you're willing to just give it up? It's it's hard to argue with that. Like, you know, again, Team Nance, all the way. Jinkies! We just cut on over to later on for some girl time. Or is it about Floyd? Because I warned you about him. Okay, well, I warned you about Chad. Yeah, but Chad and I are still together. They reflect on how times have changed, because this whole thing started with just the two gals. They met the boys, brought them on board, and it's just kind of been building since then. I guess we've got a little Scooby-Doo. Wait a bloody minute here. So Scooby-Doo does exist in this universe. <laughs> this, that alone is wild to me. Like, have they never dawned on the fact that they are just replicating Scooby-Doo? Like, even their clients don't ever say, well, you're a Scooby-Doo, basically. <laughs> it's, it's weird. Is this why they made this happen? I have, I have so many questions. Floyd is kicking it back in the mysterious machine. We're still going with that, aren't we? Mysterious machine. And he is watching back all the footage. So he has a camera set on him setting up a camera. That's fucking thorough. You know what Floyd, I underestimated you sir, apologies. You're not just an acid taking, drug smoking, I don't know the drug terms. You're not just one of those. But it's like you label. I mean, with that being said, it could also just be a very weird cut. <laughs> I think movies at this level, it's hard to tell. Either way, Floyd is now coming on in and my God, is he getting creepy. <laughs> Could this be a possession or drugs? Like, who, who fucking knows at this point? I'm here to find out. <laughs> oh shit, he did the thing. He did the thing. He did the thing. <laughs> he did the thing. <laughs> well done, Floyd. Well <laughs> done. This movie is not letting me down. He just keeps delving into the weirdness, by the way. Mm, this tastes good. Why don't you give me Trade. Are you okay? I mean, I think it's safe to say that he has gone full Scooby Doo Lally. I'll not apologise for Scooby Doo puns, ever. I'm a good boy. Scratch me. 
Just by my ear, it's my spot. Okay. Don't fucking touch me. We go on over to the gals again, and they are just having that old school Nicky buzz before things get a little bit weird for them. I am feeling a little buzzy from that cig. Yeah, we never should have quit. <sighs> no kidding. <laughs> Help me up. Oh my god. Oh. Did you see that? Like, look again. It's there, and then it's gone. I fucking love these subtle ghosts. You know it's in the background and you think you see something? That to me is always scarier than in your face horror. We head on inside and Chad, well, he's understandably losing his shit right now. This guy is fucking possessed. Naturally, the gang split up, but not to look for clues just yet. We're gonna go upstairs. If someone turned the lights on, it wasn't us. Oh, we'll figure out who it was. God. Floyd is getting grilled hard. I need you to tell me right now. Are you fucking with him again? I need you to tell me. Before we get that signature Fred catchphrase we all remember. Don't be scared, Chad. Hey, Floyd, suck my fucking cock. Ah, it's like watching the show again, isn't it? That's a perfect place for ghosts. Oh, who wants to find an old haunted village? No. Oh. Suck my fucking cock. No way. Okay, so the weird barking was all him just playing about, but the lights weren't. <laughs> but I didn't turn on the lights. I think it's safe to say shit's fucked. We move along to just the more general creepiness you would come to expect in movies like this. Did you hear that? Until Chad, though, is starting to get a bit sus. These kids aren't fucking around. They bring in this stuff and they sit there and they actually chant and they actually call up something mm -hmm. evil. But Gwen, you ask? Well, yeah, she's getting even more sus. I'm always thinking, you know... They move around like they've just taken edibles for a while until the lights all go out. Uh-oh, uh is something coming? Horrors? Ghosts? Nah, it's just time to pump. Uh. Cheers, ghosts, for just setting the mood for us. Our wee Nance here is just heading back down to that creepy dark toilet from earlier, and there's a bag just drifting majestically in the wind. It's dancing with me. It's like there's this incredibly benevolent force that wants me to know there's no reason to be afraid. She peels it open and someone has 100% Wilsoned this bag. Wilson! I don't know if that's an actual adjective or noun, I'm not really good at English. But I'm going with that, it's Wilson. And just so you know where everybody's at, our boys Floyd and Hamlet, well they're just chilling in the van watching everything go down. I do hope the cameras aren't everywhere, because we've not seen Chad in a while. Jesus Christ, Chad, you kinky bitch. <laughs> Fucking hell. I expected that from Gwen, to be honest with you. I mean, she was Daphne the Dirty One. She was Daphne the Dirty One. Definitely the Dirty One. I hope you get it. Oh, never mind though, Floyd 100% has cameras. I mean, can you blame him? I think we should talk about the breasts. Nancy is on the spooky walk. Like, she is hearing things right now. She's suspecting ghosts until, well, yeah, she just realizes what's happening. That is not ectoplasm, my guys, that's... It's a whole lot of chad right there. Suck my fucking cock! But turning back to our boy Floyd, who is thoroughly enjoying the show, we see that a ghost is as well. <laughs> it gets weird though, they're not bothered with Floyd whatsoever. Like, what's there? <laughs> Fuck no, it's our mystery machine, our mysterious machine, our mysterious massacre machine. I don't know, the van is gone. Like, I know you're distracted, Chad, but you can at least lose the belt, my guy. 
Fucking, he is committed to the look. At least it gives Floyd something he can grab onto and pull him back. Well, another option at least. It's probably for the best. The gang regroup, and I know what you're asking, Gub. How are they reacting to this? They are going off their tits. Tell me there was a fucking ghost or demon who set my Yo, fucking I was going fire, up there to dude. tell you guys there was something. Why the, the fuck, fuck did room? you do that? I can't talk you to like you use my you fucking not. equipment no, and no, my no, van to try no, and disprove something I believe doing. in. So no. I'm the big you fucking joke the tonight. Guy. Floyd though, trying to be the voice of reason, just cuts on through the argument now. Hey! Hey! So when I was working on the van and you guys were chatting with the cop, I got rid of my stash. I threw my pipe in the cooler and I put my bag of acid in this thermos. Oh fuck, so he did. Like I genuinely forgot about that moment and it all makes sense. It was weird that they kept showing them drinking the water. If you picked up on that, well done you. We're on acid, It's cool, Floyd. it's okay, it's no, okay, it's all okay. great stuff. Floyd though is just being as real as possible right now and it is amazing to watch. Like you wouldn't expect this from old Shaggy, would you? This is good news. So what you're telling me is that the van could potentially not be on fire out there right now? No, I'm not saying that. The van's on fire. Tensions just continue to rise here until Gwen has had enough, puts her foot down. Cool, no, no! Fucking asshole! Yes. Hey, no. hey, no! no. no. Fuck no. Fuck you yes. fucking yes. lost it, man! Yes. You're a whore. Look, I've no, been no. a fucking no, 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 giant no. before look, the look, night's look, over, look. man. You guys are tripping? I'm gonna assume this is coming out of... You're upset? No, it's coming out of you being a whore. Damn! Damn! Fucking Chad, like he, he is such an asshole in this. I like it, like he's a dick, but I like it. Fuck! And as for Floyd, yeah, well he just catches back on up to Nancy who is full on freaking out. You're flipping out, you're just tripping, it's cool, calm okay, down. Okay, I just don't know why you're out here. I just want you to go back inside, okay? I just want to be out here by myself. As much as he is a stoner, acider man, I don't quite know drug terms, but you know what I mean. He steps up pretty well. I am. I'm gonna sleep in the bathroom. All right, then I'm gonna stay with you. No, don't stay with me. I don't need you to stay with me, all right? I don't even know why you would want to. I'm fucking everything up. Everyone is here because of me. Everything is my fault. Look, I'm here because of you. Yeah. Don't. I know, that sucks. I'm here because of you. It's okay. Will you calm down? It's gonna be fine. I fucking love this new Shaggy. Just have fun. Just have fun. It's okay. Oh, damn, he is about to get some. And just when you thought you couldn't like him anymore. Are you sure? Yeah, sure. Top marks, Floyd. Top marks. I think we can agree you're an upstanding citizen. So they wait approximately one second before they decide to Scooby do it. <laughs> well, they're getting it on though. Chad is getting jealous. Not of them too. He's just he's just generally not happy, but that's that's fair enough. What is this? What is what is what? What we have. Chad, you're my boyfriend. You're my lover. I'm the money. You're my... Surprisingly though, it is whilst riding Floyd that Nancy just has an epiphany. I can't do this anymore. The group. I can't do it anymore. I quit. You quit? Yeah, I quit. What the fuck are you gonna do? I don't know. I'm gonna do something else. Poor mystery team. Like, I can see your point though, but... It's sad to see. I'm not good at anything. No, there's no such thing as ghosts, and you're really good at not finding them. Well, I want to be really good at finding something. Like, imagine watching the cartoon, and then one episode, Velma just had a breakdown like this. It'd be rough. These two find a car, though. It's that banker guy from earlier. Is that a car? Fully, that's a car. Tell me you have a Slim Jim in that bag. You remember the guy that is sensitive to cultures and doesn't go into stereotypes? That guy. No more chupacabra, no more spirito, no more diablo. During all this though, Gwen and Chad are just getting real with each other now. Chad, are you breaking up with me? You make me feel like a full person. I don't always feel that way. And I really, I didn't mean to cheat on you. I'm sorry. 
sorry. Oh, damn, Gwen. Like, we are so far from Scooby-Doo, it is wild. Chad, I love you. I love you. Like, I know you can't keep thinking of this as Scooby-Doo, but it's Scooby-Doo, and it's, it's brilliant. I love it. They just seem to make up again before Chad wins all of our hearts by snuggling up with our main boy, Hambone. He's gonna lie down with this dog because he loves me unconditionally and he's beautiful and he doesn't cheat on me either. Can you confirm that this dog is eating a human hand? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I fucking loved that moment. Naturally, like any of us I would imagine, they just freak out right back on to Floyd and Nancy. What? We found from? a hand. We found a human a hand. Sorry, you're a liar and a cheater now. Our boy Hambone found it, not you, you prick. <laughs> Fucking at least give Hambone the credit he deserves. Floyd though sees that it's not just a bit of bolognese here and they dip into the car. We gotta get the fuck out of here, man. Yes. We have got to get oh, the yeah. fuck out of here. Where the fuck is he? Yeah, where is he? Mike is nowhere in sight though, so have a quick guess where you think he might be. Because we really like Jesus' car. Boys, pop the trunk, please. Hey guys, I think the banker's in the truck. Oh, well, that was a very quick mystery. Good on them. They, they've earned their title. Gonna solve that mystery. This bit I do question, though. So Nancy is trying to get through to 911, so she calls the sheriff from earlier. But apparently she's passed due on her phone bill, so she can't get through to them. Then can you just patch me through to 911? I, really I would have thought it would have been easier if she just called 911 directly. And see, for us here, even if you don't have credit, they will allow you to phone emergency services. I thought that'd be the case for them. I mean, if I'm wrong, let me know, but that's something we have. Either way though, she is struggling on the phone for a while. I cannot do that right now. It is an emergency. Just please, can you get me 911? <laughs> Is that thing? Like, is it actually a normal child? Well, normal in the context of this movie, let's be fair. Or is it a ghost? I genuinely do not know how the movie's going to end at this point. Like, if it's going to be real or not. Hamlet here is leading the charge into the manor, and I swear, I fucking hope he's okay. Hey! Hey, what? Now though, strap yourselves in, guys. It is time for that traditional Scooby-Doo chase. This is just great. Like, well done to the movie for putting this in here. <laughs> Fucking, I am loving it. Let's get out of here! Well, it's Saturday morning. Don't know what to do. Since Monday Eventually, though, it all quietens down as we need Hamlet. I swear to God, if Hamlet is hurt, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna freak. Like, he's, he's the best boy. Me and Floyd are on the exact same page here. Hamlet! 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 We keep hunting, we're back in the pentagram room, and now it is a bit all fucked up. Nah, fuck this movie. Fucking, why you? Why do you have to do that? Why do you have to toy with her emotions like that? Like, it's, it's Scooby-Doo, and you do that. Fuck this. Are you ready to riot? I'm ready to riot. I don't even care if they are 100% normal at this point. Chad, do what you've got to do for us. Damn, boy! Gwen, though, jumps in trying to be the voice of reason now. Oh my 
God, this movie has gone up a notch now. He was a bit of a prick, but in the end, he defended our boy Hambone. So you know what? Raise your glasses. R.I.P. Chad. Our gang here now just dip and hide. And I think we can all just take a bit of a breather. Like, a lot has just fucking happened. We are really taking our time here whilst these psychos are just roaming around slowly. It is fucking tense. The sheriff is back now and he is bringing coffees for all the gang. Oh, never mind. He intended to bring coffees for all the gang. <laughs> Fucking, he's so useless. I mean, at least he's got donuts though, that's something. Floyd is making a move for the window and he spots Sheriff Flirty Pants outside. Gwen, however, decides this is her chance to make a solo play. Fair play, Gwen. And somehow, though, managed to move the drawers in silence because the other two didn't fucking notice a thing. Don't worry, though. We all meet up. Gwen didn't go too far. And Floyd is now in the middle of a deadly girl sandwich. Come on, guys. Head out the gutter. Not like that. Although, these two swap builds because, let's be honest, she is not ready to take the axe. <laughs> And it is all going well until... <laughs> Holy fuck Floyd is not doing well. Like this movie's just gone from not to 60 in like five minutes. Which for cars, fucking slow. For a movie, it's going fast. Floyd. We love you, you're a good guy. You're probably out your tits on acid, but you know what, we love you around here. Well done, sir. The girls manage to get themselves into an elevator, but this hulking brute jams them in there, so they are just fucking trapped. <laughs> Who knows what they're going to Scooby do? <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing it, I'm gonna keep doing it. Floyd gets dragged away, but don't worry, it's not all lost yet, our saviour rocks on up. Not as donuts though. We all dip here because fucking, of course you would. And Sheriff Flirty Pants is leading the pack. Where are your friends? <laughs> Well fucking done, Sheriff. He is a better shot than Grant was anyway. If you get that one, thank you. They all dip outside and just run the garden like it is the home stretch now. What could possibly go wrong? Oh fuck, he didn't last long. Like this shit. This sheriff is shite at walls. Like, I've never thought to put on my CV good at walls. I'm putting it on everything from now on. <laughs> he is terrible. Thankfully though, and I say that loosely, he dropped his gun over the other side of the wall so the girls, they are armed. Nancy, with her newfound trigger finger, wants to go back in, but Gwen, yeah, she wants out and just to leave. I can't let him just die, no. okay? I can't do this again. You're gonna die. Don't go back. You can't really blame her, let's be honest. Nancy, though, being the absolute OG that she is, heads back on inside following that blood trail Geralt style. Stinks of piss and vodka. Until she is back at that creepy dark bathroom in the basement. It is genuinely like the abyss how dark this fucking place is.
Our creeps are more just taunting the sheriff here, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I swear this is like the Zelda fairy chamber sound. <laughs> Those fairies were fucking nightmare fuel though, so it works here as well. They are proper fucking around down here, by the way. It is just wild. <laughs> Gwen gets a bit of that FOMO and decides to head back into the movie with that classic horror movie entrance. It's theory time now, and Gwen, she has worked this out. Baby, this family couldn't take it anymore. Wait, that's why they killed themselves with their kids. No. What if they didn't kill the kids? What if they actually ran away? It is pretty hard to hear, but I'll give you it in a nutshell. People claimed that they were Satanists to try and get them out of the house, and they eventually turned out their own lights, to put it lightly. But the kids never ran away. They've been living here since, like The Descent style. So yeah, all in all, a pretty rough paper round if you ask me. Queen, they're just a couple of little kids trying to protect their home. Is it just me though, or did she say that with like an air of sympathy? You know, it's like she's trying to understand them, but no. Like, have you seen Hambone? We've not in a while. Fuck this family. Fucking Hambone. Back on over to Zelda's most terrifying fairies. Oh, the Kaiser. The Kaiser. Yes. We're in first grade together. Holy shit, the sheriff actually knows the daughter? That was a weird connection I didn't expect. Fair play. The remaining Hamlet do gang just step up in the nick of time. We're not here to hurt you guys, we're just. We just want our friend back. Will they understand? You're not Satanists. You're just. Really messed up. And. That's not your fault. Fucking of course not. If you were just pleased with the end, now Gwen, I need you to fucking shoot him! That's another one down. Fuck me, this herd is just getting thinned out fast. Like, I, I told you it was ramping up. The young creepy girl here dips hard because, well, obviously, like, you're outnumbered and outgunned. And now we just see the damage done to our poor Gwen. Please kill me. Please, please. Oh, damn, she has been through a lot. Like, she is not half the woman she was at the start of this movie. Nancy, being a conflicted best friend, decides to put her out of misery, which is more than fair. <laughs> I would Daphne want put down as well in that situation. Our last two standing are on their way to safety, but uh oh. I can take a nap. No. I imagine the Kaiser kid holds a bit of a grudge. She pounces on down, knocks out the sheriff, and it is time for a final fight. Nothing quite like a bit of girl on girl, am I right? <laughs> Nancy, though, is absolutely on one now. Like, she is seeing beyond red, and I don't blame her for a second. Okay, so not to sound like an absolute psycho myself here, but thank God she held her head underwater for longer than necessary. Like, <laughs> I know how that makes me sound, but hear me out. How many movies have you seen where they hold them underwater until they stop moving and then they just immediately give up and that person gets up out the water? It happens all the time, whereas now, this was like a puddle version double tap, if that makes sense. Nancy and the sheriff get back to the car and can we just fire the sheriff now? Like, he's been shite. He can't bring coffee, he can't hop walls, 
The donut has just fucking disappeared. He's useless. Get him out. He needs a new job. Now, after all of this, there is just one thing left to ask. Uh, can I have the keys? <laughs> fucking hell, there's another one. And yes, this did take me a minute to put together myself, but there were two siblings in that manner, so... You do the math. Feral incest child, baby. That's what we're talking about here. And that is credits. Now, when you've seen the title or the poster or the characters, I'm not quite sure what you thought this would be. But for me, I thought it was going to be one of these movies that just banks in on the kind of similarities or name and they don't really make an effort anywhere else. I was fucking wrong. I unironically had a fucking great time with this movie. All of the scooby Dooisms that I wanted from it were here. You know, you've got the chase, you've got the dynamic of the group, Hamlet, fucking R.I.P. Hamlet. But you've got that synergy there. You've got the relationships. You've got the conflict within the group, which was new, I'll give them that. And then they added their own twist onto it. You know, like with Chad actually being a believer and the rest of the gang not. At the start, they fucked up a police investigation because that would happen in Scooby-Doo. What do you think this is, some Saturday morning cartoon show? The characters as well all clearly represented their cartoon counterparts. Like, we could tell who's who and yet they were different enough that they felt original and, well, legally not the same, I imagine, was a big thing they were going for. There really wasn't many moments in this movie of characters just being idiots, which is something you find all too often in movies at this level. You know when they decide to do something just ridiculously stupid? This all seemed pretty sensible. I'll give them that. Why they still deal with Floyd, though? Like, I love him. Great guy. He's putting acid in water. Like, this... <laughs> he's... That might not be a sensible choice, that may have affected other things, but for the most part, they were pretty on point in their decision making. Well done movie. So that was everything here on Saturday Morning Massacre, or Saturday Morning Mystery. Either or, it's up to you still. What did you make of it? Have you seen this movie before or was it brand new to you as a concept? Please do let me know. I love diving into the comments and having some back and forth with you. And if there's any movies you'd like to see getting that gub treatment again, do let me know, I'm adding them to my watch list. I already have a bit of a list here, but it never hurts to add to it. If you've made it this far and you haven't yet, please do consider hitting like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel more than you know. And of course, thank you to the channel members. I don't quite have a group name for you as yet. I don't plan to create one. There's not much you can do with Gub. But nonetheless, it's much appreciated. Your names are somewhere here now. Thank yous. Now with all that being said, as always, thank you so much for watching.